Today, we're going to show you how to gear up for PvP from the moment you hit level 85 in Kata, including some shortcuts you might not know about, and some information on how the Conquest system might be getting a huge change in Kata Classic. In case you weren't aware, Skill Capped was founded right before Kata was released, and hosted hundreds of guides made alongside some of the best players at the time. Now, over a decade later, we're excited to announce our brand new Classic site, which comes with a complete add-on profiler for the latest version of Classic WoW. That's right, the same add-on pack we developed for Dragonflight is available right now for Kata. And over the coming weeks, we'll be updating our website with class courses for Season 9, including detailed damage, CC, and playstyle guides aimed to get you right into the action. As always, we'll be offering a 400 rating gain guarantee to make sure you can get the rank you've always wanted in Classic WoW. And for a limited time, we're offering an exclusive discount using the sign-up links below. For now though, back to the video. Alright, so you just hit level 85. Congrats! Now what? Here we have a simple goal. Get ready to farm BGs and heroic dungeons. I know you probably didn't want to hear about PvE so early into the video, but you can technically skip heroics if you want, which we will explain later. Like any good WoW gamer in 2024, the first step in being pre-pre-biz is to head to the auction house, where it's time to spend all that gold you earned with hard work and dedication. Here you can actually buy resilience gear to help bump up your item level and stomp noobs early on in BGs. Cloth wearers will want to search Fire Weave or Ember Fire. Leather and Mail wearers will want to search Bloodied Leather, Worm Hide, Scale, or Dragon Scale. And then Plate wearers should search Ornate Purium or Bloodied Purium. Again, all of these pieces have resilience. Just be sure to check the main stat to buy the right one. Now, depending on how deep your pockets are, there are some more items you can buy on the Auction House too. First up, if you play a healer, you'll want to get your hands on the Dark Moon card Tsunami. This will be worth the investment since it will actually be best in slot, or at least close to best in slot even into Season 10. Casters can also pick up their own Dark Moon card, which will be best in slot for some specs, and picking this up will definitely give you a huge advantage over the early season when everyone is running around in blues. There are also some Dark Moon cards for melee, but here you can unequip your credit card since there are much better options even from Heroic Dungeons. If you are an engineer, you are in luck because you will get a head start on one of your main pre biz pieces thanks to some epic goggles. And if you really want to be sweaty, then there are multiple epic items available for archaeology. Now, while it might be tempting to try and farm these pieces, keep in mind that there is an element of RNG at place and you will wind up replacing all these anyway, so in no way are these required for PvP. And finally, if you want to reach super far into your pocket, there's a whole slew of blues and epics that you can buy from the auction house, ranging from world drops to raid BOEs. Again, you will wind up replacing most of these pieces eventually, so don't worry about unsheathing your credit card for now. But now it's time to move on to our next goal, which is to get full honor gear and start farming heroic dungeons. Yeah, 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 we know. PvE, boring, right? But don't panic. Most of your pre will be bloodthirsty gear, which is purchasable with honor, but there are no bloodthirsty weapons, which is where PvE or the auction house might come into play. So once you hit 85 and are waiting for the season to start, you will need to farm BGs. If you purchased all your resilience gear from the auction house the moment you hit 85, you should have no problem stomping noobs in Warsong Gulch. Now, while this is happening, keep in mind that you will have the ability to queue for Tolbarad every two and a half hours. Tolbarad is an 80 v 80 battleground, which not only rewards the winning faction with a significant amount of honor, but after the season starts will grant access to the Baradin Hold raid. Much like Winter Grasp and Wrath, this faction controlled raid has some fairly easy bosses which have a chance at dropping any vicious gladiators off pieces, but can even drop vicious gladiators leg and glove pieces, so if you're lucky you can get ahead on your bis list during your pre bis phase. You will be able to do this raid once per week and it's so damn easy that there is no excuse. Tolbarad also includes a weekly quest and daily quests which reward a unique currency called Tolbarad Commendations. These can be used to purchase weapons, epic trinkets, and some unique mounts if you're interested. Plus, you can even use these badges to get your helmet and shoulder enchants for later on. And while you're waiting for Tolbarad to start, you should still be farming battlegrounds with the end goal of getting a complete set of bloodthirsty gear. Now, at this point, you might be wondering about the elephant in the room, PvE. Heroic dungeons can be part of your pre bis phase, but are only useful for very specific off pieces and weapons. Earlier, we mentioned that melee might want to pass on the Dark Moon cards from the auction house. That's because for any agility wearers who happen to also be human, one of your pre bis trinkets might come from a heroic stone core, with the key to the endless chamber being just as good as the vicious gladiator's proc trinket. 
Strength users will want to farm Heroic Lost City of the Tolvir for the Heart of Solace, which again provides a comparable stat boost to Vicious Gladiator's gear. There are also some pre biz weapons that come from Heroics if you can't afford pieces from the Auction House or don't want to spend time farming Archaeology. Heroics will also award Justice Points, which you can spend on weapons from vendors in the capital cities for each faction. Heroic Dungeons will even award Valor Points, which can then be spent to get some more epics as you gear up, including some pretty strong trinkets for mages. Valor can be redeemed in the same location as Justice in Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Keep in mind that you can only obtain 1000 Valor per week, so you will have to wait until at least week 2 in order to buy most pieces. Anyway, by the end of your previous phase, you should wind up having the majority of your gear coming from Honor through Bloodthirsty Gladiator's pieces. And if you were able to afford any BOE's epics from the Auction House, or have any epic pieces from Professions, they might wind up populating other slots. Alright, so now we've farmed our Honor gear and Heroic Dungeon gear, and might be lucky enough to have a few epics from the Auction House. Our final step is to get our Conquest pieces, and do some raiding if we really want to min-max. Here's the good news, the Conquest system in Cataclysm will allegedly work identical to retail, at least that's how it worked on the beta. This means that every week you will have a Conquest bar to fill up by playing any raided mode, whether it's 2v2, 3v3, 5v5, or even RBGs. Every raided mode rewards Conquest, which will help fill up your bar. You can spend Conquest on Vicious Gladiator's gear, filling up every single slot. Note that Vicious Weapons are time-gated slightly, requiring you to earn a little over 7,000 Conquest before you can unlock them. The only item with a rating requirement is the Elite Weapons, which have a higher item level, but require 2200 rating in any bracket. As for more unconfirmed information, at the time of writing this guide, we've heard rumors of a Conquest catch-up system that resembles Retail WoW. So even if you go on a vacation with your supermodel friends, or level an alt later on, it means you won't be completely screwed missing out on Conquest. Alright, and now it's time for the massive elephant in the room, raids. If you want to be ultra sweaty, on the cutting edge, with no excuses possible, then it's true that some of your best in slot pieces might come from heroic raids in Season 9. The item level of most heroic raiding gear is 372 putting it a few points above Vicious Gladiator. Heroic Sinestra from Bastion of Twilight even drops 379 item level gear, which again, if you want to be super try hard, might technically be true best in slot. Now, does missing out on this gear mean you're absolutely doomed to failure? Of course not. Remember that the overwhelming majority of your best in slot gear will be Vicious Gladiator's pieces. Having those nerdy PvE pieces in Season 9 will give you an advantage, but not by much. And remember, if you want a true advantage going into Kata, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We're the only place that literally promises you will gain rating. Seriously, we're so confident you will improve that we offer a money back guarantee while using our service. And with our brand new skillcap UI, you will have a huge advantage over the competition right from the start. So if you want instant access to the best PvP guides around, be sure to check us out using the exclusive discount links below. For now though, we want to thank you all for watching, see you soon.